I want to speak within these few minutes on the topic refreshment in his presence. Refreshment in his presence. Uh, yeah, we're looking at the time, uh, you know, we're looking, uh, we are living in a day and a time whereby, you know, people are getting tired, or if not getting tired, they are getting used. Uh, we have people are getting used to God, <laughs> they are getting used to church, and there is no more that catch, cutting uh, age. You know, what we've been doing has become tradition. And so God is just the normal, and, uh, you know, the things of God have become so common. And that way we need to be refreshed. We need to be, refi to be revived and to be refreshed in his presence. Let's go to uh, what our senior pastor just read for us. Uh, that is the theme of our revi revival week, and that is Psalms 42, verses 1 and 2. And it says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. You know, I don't know if that's the state of your heart. I don't know what is that thing that your soul is panting for. You know? Uh, so David, the king, uh, declared and said, As the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. For you, O God. You know, uh, it's your desire that will always drive your action. You know, it's what you desire that will always push you to do things. It's desire that always make us even attempt some things. And so David says, my soul pants for you, O God. And verses 2 is what I like most. He says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. You know, that's where we should we should be. That should be the condition of, the, of our hearts. We should be thirsting after God and nothing else. Amen? We should be thirsting for God. God should be the very person we desire. And so David says, my soul thirsts for the living God. There is a man who is a church father. His name is Augustine, Augustine of, uh, of Hippo. He, he coined this phrase which has become common, uh, you know, for centuries now. Um, Augustine once said, There is a God-shaped hole in the human heart that only God can fill. There is a God-shaped hole in the human heart that only God can fill. That's the truth, really. You know, uh, many a times we thirst for other things. We thirst for fame. We thirst for riches. We thirst for uh, friendships. We thirst for human relationships. But you know what? That cannot fill the God-shaped hole in the human heart. You know? Uh, some of us think that we will become better when we get this and the other achievement. But let me bring it to our notice. Please, nothing can satisfy the human soul. Nothing can satisfy the human soul except God alone. Please, nothing can satisfy. You know, uh, the fallacy in life is that at times the devil would try to tell us that uh, you can be better without God. You know, the devil gives you some offers in life that, and, and entices you that just do away with the things of God. You are better even without God. Let me bring to our notice today that there is a shape, a God-shaped hole in our lives which 
Nothing can satisfy except the Lord alone. Friends, let me tell you the truth. Nothing can satisfy the human soul except God. You know, Satan is a liar. He is a deceiver. And he has deceived many people. And, and people keep running after things, thinking that things will satisfy their hearts. Hey, you running after promotion. You running after, you know, um, you know, this and the other thing. Thinking that these things will satisfy your heart. They won't. They won't. You know, I once heard a phrase uh, about uh, someone who was talking about marriage. I don't know how true it, this it is, how true this is. And this person said that marriage is an institution where those who are outside really want to come in. They are fighting at the door and everybody say, I want to get in. And he said, but those who are inside, they are also <laughs> fighting at the door. They want to come out. Okay, I don't know <laughs> what, what condition your marriage is. Uh, but that could be true. <laughs> you know, it can be true. You know, depending with how you carry on your marriage. You find someone just uh, because of pressure just says, Settle, sets, uh, settles on you know, a, a, a relationship that there's no God in that relationship. You just went after a very nice Mercedes and you said, hey man, so that nitambia nini wa? What? You know, I, have Nikona, I have someone who is heavy uh, and heavyweight and you put on your status, oh you are in this, you're flying here and there. You know, you think you'll be happy. My friend, let me tell you, you, you may get a Mercedes, but you lack the joy of your soul. You may get inside and just want to come out. God is the only person who can surely and 100% satisfy the human soul. I tell you for, 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 for free. So, so we need to know how to come into the presence of God. You know, you remember what Jesus says. He said, I am the true vine. You know, Jesus did not preach like how Pastor Pro preaches at times. You know, Jesus spoke. Jesus just spoke simply. But whatsoever thing Jesus said, it lasted and it's lasting for all eternity. You know, Jesus said simply, I am the true vine are the branches. And he said, if you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. And that's the truth of life. We can't be fresh unless we abide, unless we abide onto the, true, on, onto the vine. There's no way we can be fresh in our lives unless we abide in the true vine. So there are things which make us fresh. There are things which make us abide in his presence. So one of the things I want to uh, bring to us some, um, some important things which will always keep us close to the Lord and which will always keep us refreshed in his presence. Now, the first thing is that we get refreshed or refreshment through the word of God. Refreshment through the word of God. You know, uh, it's very difficult to be refreshed without the word of God. Yeah, it's very difficult. And let me say, this is the basis of remaining fresh in your life. This word of God has power to refresh us. You know, Jesus once said in John 17, he said, my word. You know, sanctify them by my word, for my word 
is truth. No, sanctify them by the truth, for my word is truth. So the word of God has the capacity to cleanse us. The word of God has the capacity to make us fresh. You know? This is what I like. And for your information, really, if there is anything that ex excites this man, this man is the word of God. Seriously, you people have never seen me happy. When I'm really happy is when I read something from the scriptures and it comes alive. Oh, I tell you, it refreshes me quite a lot. There is power in this word to refresh us. Are we together? And so Paul writes to the church in, 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 Coloss, uh, in, in, the, in the book of Colossians, uh, chapter 3 and verses 16, and he tells them, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Can we say it again? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let this word dwell in your heart richly. You know, this is the habit of my life. For this many years, I, I have followed the Lord. I have allowed this word every other time to dwell in my heart. You know, I don't read the Bible so that I may preach. No, I don't do that. I read the Bible, I read the Word of God, because that's where I find instruction. And one wonderful thing is that this Word of God has power, has power to, you know, to direct our steps. There is always direction that comes from the Word of God. And this direction does not only come, it comes with refreshment. You know, you find your heart, your life is so dry, go to the word of God. Now, let me even tell you this. The basis of a, of a refreshed prayer life is the word. You know, at times you go to the Lord and you even don't know what, where to begin. You know, I will be saying something about prayer. But at times, some of us, if we don't have a problem then we don't have a reason to pray. Okay? Some of us can really shout, you know, and say, I bind you, Satan. I bind you, Satan. The day Satan shows up. And so we will pray that he shows up every day for you to always bind and pray. But that should not, should not be the motivation, okay? You know, let the word of God, let the word of God be the motivation in your heart. You know, when you go to the place of prayer, where do you begin? You have to begin from the place of the word. Okay? That's point number one. You have to get refreshed through the word of God. And, G and Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Richly. Let the word of God be in your heart so richly. The second thing is that we need to get refreshed through prayer. Refreshment through prayer. Now, I just began to talk about this. Uh, a Christian who is not prayerful uh, will always not be fresh. You know? Freshness comes through the place of prayer. I once said this, and I still want to repeat. If you find someone who does not pray, then I'm telling you for free, you just have a seasonal person in front of you will not stand the test of time. Prayer is that place we come to God and not only do we tell him about our issues, but God speaks with us. 
You know, it speaks when we come to the place of prayer. It refreshes us. We drink from his presence. When we pray, then our lives get transformed. And at times, one day someone said, when do you pray? When do you pray? And uh, I, I, I was telling these people, I personally don't have a special time of prayer. But every hour, every place, everywhere, to me is a time of conversation with God. And do you know where it begins? It begins from meditating from the word. You know, when that word is in my heart, is in my mind, it leads me to the place of talking to God. It, it's the place where God is speaking to me. And I find my heart and my mind is in constant conversation with God. You see? So let us not be so mechanical <laughs> with prayer, whereby you, you say, I want to spend three hours. It's not about three hours. It's about that fellowship with God. Can we say amen? amen? But this is not also an excuse where you now say, uh, brethren, you know, I didn't come for the prayer service because I was just having fellowship with God alone. No. You know, <laughs> if, if there is prayer in your heart, let there be prayer on your lips. If there be prayer in your heart, let's see you also at the place of prayer. Are we together? But prayer has to be a heart issue. It has to be a heart issue. And we have to be constantly in, you know, you know, you know be in a constant, uh, what is it, conversation with God. And that comes through his word. And that comes through that abiding in his presence. And we shout hallelujah. I really like that. So prayer, the kind of prayer I'm talking about here is not just you are saying I'm going for the prayer service. No, having, you know, the Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says the house of God shall be called the house of prayer. So you are constantly abiding. You are constantly in conversation with God. And that is only possible when we have the word of God dwelling in our hearts richly. And you see down there in the place we read about having the word of God dwelling in our hearts richly. You know the Bible says that way we shall have psalms. We shall have hymns. We shall have, uh, what's the other thing there? It's Psalms and what? Um, it says, yeah, we shall have uh, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and uh, with gratitude in our hearts. You know? Friends, it's about the condition of our hearts. It is not about our outward Prayer is not about our outward. It's about the condition of our heart. What is the state of our heart? Revival begins there. It's not an outward thing. And prayer should be an inward thing. It should be that movement of the life of Christ from the, from the vine moving to the branches. And that connection of the branches into the vine. That's very important. The, the, the second last thing that we should get refreshed through is refreshment through fellowship. Refreshment through fellowship. Matthew 18, 20 says, For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. There am I with them. So this is Jesus He's saying, where two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus says, I am in their midst. I am in their midst. And, and so, that is the importance of fellowship. So, you don't say, uh, oh, I will just be at a corner in my place seeking the Lord 
and you are not in the company of the fellowship of believers. Jesus has promised his presence in the fellowship of believers. Do you know Jesus is here? Do you know he's right here? How do we know? Because we are more than, we are two or three that have come together in his name. So Jesus is here. The true vine is here. And so anytime you stay away from the fellowship of believers, you are staying away from the true vine. So if you want to be fresh every other time, you should love the coming together of the brethren. You cannot be more spiritual than the fellowship of believers. You know, unfortunately, the devil would always tell us, ah, oh, look, you know, I don't have to join them. And you think now, oh, these people are unspiritual. You, have you had such people? They, they look at other people and say, they, it seems, eh, I want to do a dini sana. They are not spiritual. Then they say, let's go out for a spiritual encounter somewhere else. My friends, we don't want, need many things. We just need to come together in the name of Jesus, and Jesus is right there. So anytime you're running away from one, two that have come in the name of the Lord, you're running away from Jesus. Okay? So, if you want to remain fresh in your life, if you want to remain Abide, you know, if you have to, uh, uh, to abide in the true vine, you have to always be in the fellowship of believers. Be in the fellowship of believers. Hebrews chapter 3 and verses 13 and 14. The Bible says, But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Wow. Do you want to become de de deceived? Do you want to have your heart hardened? Then stay away from the fellowship of believers. So when you find someone going away from the fellowship of believers, you know that is a strategy of Satan. Because he knows that when you stay away from the fellowship of believers, then what happens? Your heart is hardened. You become hardened in your heart. And you get deceived by sin. That is a true sign. If you want to see someone who is getting deceived, you just get to know when you see someone going away from the fellowship of believers. So, the Bible says we should encourage one another as long as it is called today. And that is why it's so important to always be in, uh, you know, staying in constant touch with, with believers. And the Bible says, let us encourage one another. Uh, in the days of old, we, we had people who called themselves uh, the uh, the the Tuku Tenderesa group. These were people among the Anglican uh, church. A and these people were, you know, were people who came out of a revival in, in some, um, some years back, and it spread across East Africa. And one characteristic about these people is that they loved the fellowship of brethren, and they called themselves brethren. But in our day, Satan has succeeded to separate all of us. You find people are so busy, so busy with other things, and they stay away from the fellowship of believers. But I hear he's the word of God. Let's come back together again to the fellowship of brethren. And the Bible says, let's encourage one another as long as it is called today, today. The last thing I want to say uh, 
in this is that uh, we, we get refreshment through service. We get refreshment through service. You know, this is what I'm calling the presence in going. You know, Matthew 28, 20 says, And surely I am with you always uh, to the very end of the age. This is Jesus. So he's telling these disciples, as you go to preach the word, as you go out there, Jesus says, verily, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So whenever you go, then the true vine comes with you. You see? Whenever you go, then Jesus who says, I'm the true vine, he says, I am with you. He says, I am with you. So when we serve, his presence comes with us. And when his presence comes with us, we get refreshed. So if you find someone whose life is not, is dull, it's not fresh, it's because somehow this person has gone away from the place of service. But there is freshness that comes through service. Luke chapter 10, verse 17, the Bible says, The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. This is the joy of service. The Bible says 72 had gone to preach the word of God, cast out demons, heal the sick. And when they came back, the Bible says they came back with joy. And the Bible says, you know, they were so happy. They were so excited. What kind of joy was in their lives? It's the joy in service. Friends, you're missing a lot anytime you stay away from the place of service. There is revival that comes with service. If you don't serve, then you get outdated. But you can be refreshed by coming into the presence of God. My conclusion is, success in life is not based on our physical strength, but rather on the spiritual strength which we gain in his presence. Success in life is not based on our physical strength, but rather on the spiritual strength which we gain in his presence. So, uh, if we really have to, to soar high and, and be fresh in this life, it's not based on how physically we are strong or economically healthy or socially connected. It's highly dependent on how we are connected to God and the strength which comes from God through his presence. Isaiah 40, 30 and verses 31, the Bible says, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's the promise of God. Do you want to run? Do you want to, uh, to walk and not faint? Do you want to run and not grow weary? It's not dependent on your physical strength is dependent on how much you wait on the Lord. They that wait on God, they shall mount up with wings, they shall fly, and they shall not grow weary. Freshness is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I am the true vine, and if you abide in me, you shall bear much fruit. If we have to be fruitful and fresh in our work with the Lord, then we have to abide in the vine. And there are things that make us abide in the vine. The first thing I said is the word of God. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. The second thing I talked about is prayer. Whenever we come into his presence, his word, in fact, John 15 says, Jesus said, if my word abides in you, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, 
ask anything in my name and I will do it for you. The third thing is that there is that presence, there is that abiding in his presence through fellowship. Jesus said, where three, where two or three gather in my name, Jesus said, I am there. So whenever we come together like this, Jesus is in, is in our midst. The true vine is, is, is in our midst. And that way we connect to him and his life flows into our very being. The last thing I said is that, you know, there is that joy that comes through service. Jesus said, go and I am with you to the end of the ages. You know, Jesus is not saying, I will be sitting with you. He says, I am with you when you go. You know, you don't have to worry what will I say. Just arise and begin to serve and you see Jesus just coming alive in your midst. You may be saying, I don't know what to say, but just stand. Do something for God, and you will find that Jesus will just come along with you, stand with you, and he's going to refresh you. That is abiding in his presence through service. Let's stand on our feet.